fish now, but or rather we've stopped picking it, but we pick tons of rhubarb just from this bed in the shade or a little bit shady and rhubarb is very happy in the shade and what we have quite carefully is three different varieties. So this row here is Timperley Early which comes in March, then we have a row of Stockbridge Arrow which comes in April, then we have a row of Victoria um, and Albert, sometimes just called Victoria, which comes last of all in sort of May. But we also then have three more new rows which we divided from that lot last year. So we haven't actually picked from these because when you divide, you want to divide rhubarb every three years, but you then want to leave it in its first year in its soil without harvesting. So we haven't been, we've been picking from this section but not from that section this, this year. But so, Timperley early gives us early, Stockbridge Arrow mid-season, Victoria late season, and if you just keep that cropping going, you can honestly, genuinely can pick rhubarb from your garden from March until July. And we again make lovely syrups from our rhubarb. We take them in just before we leave work and we stew some stems down and, um, and then leave it in a jelly bag to drip overnight. And then when we come in in the morning, you just put whatever flavouring you want. I love star anise also with rhubarb, but it's really nice, as we all know, with orange. And it's in fact delicious in a syrup with mint. So whichever flavour we fancy that day, you then heat it with um, sugar to taste to see how, how sweet you want it. And you want it a little bit sweeter than you would normally if you're going to store it, because of course that's what is the preservative. And, uh, and then you've got a syrup that you keep in the fridge and you can serve a homemade cordial, you know, whenever anyone special comes round. Um, and so it doesn't just have to be elderflower cordial, you can use all these sorts of things to make delicious homemade, homegrown cordials.